A little over a year ago, I found out about this project called the Ashida Wii Portable Mod. It's essentially taking a Wii and turning it into a portable GameCube. In fact, the controller shell looks just like a GameCube WaveBird controller. In order to fit the Wii motherboard inside of that small WaveBird size controller, you have to physically cut up the motherboard so that it will fit. What we need to do is something called the OMG WTF trim. It's basically cutting down the Wii motherboard to its essential components so that we could fit it into a portable console. However, there is so much going on between the Ashida mod itself and the Wii motherboard trim that I wanted to split this into multiple videos. But before we take a Dremel to this Wii, we need to soft mod it. So that's what this video is going to be about all these steps to soft bonding the Wii before we do the OMG WTF trim. Before we talk about soft bonding, I want to go over a couple of things. The first thing is the Ashida mod and most Wii portable mods are only compatible with CPU version 40 Wii motherboards and newer. The Wii motherboard I was holding earlier is my childhood console and it is too old for this mod. It's a CPU 01. But in order to soft bond the Wii, you don't need to take the Wii apart yet. If you actually wanted to check the version of the Wii that you have, if you take off the battery tray on the side here and flip it upside down, whoops, I just lost a thousand things. This is not gonna be easy to show on the camera. It's gonna be actually really impossible. But you can look and see the bottom of the motherboard from the outside of the case in like the far right corner. That will say the version of the Wii motherboard. Well, then you might be asking, why is this Wii already taken apart? Well, for one thing, we eventually will be needing to take it apart, but I didn't have a newer compatible Wii motherboard. I just have my original console, which is the CPU 01. What I did to save a little bit of money is to buy a CPU 40 motherboard, and I just swapped all the parts from my original Wii and put the CPU 40 motherboard in here so that we can soft mod it. The other thing is I'm not gonna cover disassembly of the Wii at this point. There is a great iFixit guide on how to take it apart if you do wanna swap the motherboard over or eventually when we do need to take this apart to build the Ashida mod, you can follow that guide for how to take the whole console apart. The last thing I wanna say is that this next part of the video, I actually recorded about a year ago, actually going over all of the soft modding steps. It was recorded last year. However, they should be mostly relevant as this stuff really hasn't updated that much. Although if you're going through the steps and you have to download a file, obviously you wanna download the latest versions of these files and not the files that I have in my video. The goal for the soft modding is to install the homebrew channel and an app called RV Loader. So let's go over to the computer and I'll explain how to soft mod this Wii and to install RV Loader. Before we soft mod our Wii, we wanna make sure that we're on the latest version of the Wii system. The latest firmware is 4.3. So I'm gonna go ahead and update my Wii to 4.3. Geez, that took a while, but uh, we're all set now. Just to confirm, we go into Wii settings here. And now we're on 4.3. Over here on the computer, we're gonna to go to Wii.guide, which is pretty much a step-by-step -step guide for learning how to soft mod a Wii. The ultimate goal of soft modding our Wii is to install the homebrew channel, but we'll talk about that more later. And it actually gives us a few options for exploits that we're gonna to do to our Wii. Now, in my opinion, of these four here, Letterbomb is probably the simplest. It only requires an SD card and not that much time. So let's go ahead and click on Letterbomb. Now, the first step we need to do is check the MAC address of our Wii. If we go back to the Wii, we go to Wii settings again, we go to internet here and console info. We're gonna find the MAC address of this Wii. So keep that in mind and go back to the computer. Then we're gonna click this please.hackme.com site and we're gonna put in our MAC address. And we wanna make sure that bundle the HackMe installer is checked here. In my case, this website defaulted to 4.3e, but I'm gonna select 4.3u because that's the specific firmware version that I have. Make sure I'm not a robot and then click one of these cut the wire buttons here. It doesn't really matter. Some files are gonna download here. I'm gonna copy and paste these into the root of a SD card. This is just a normal 32 gigabyte SD card formatted as FAT32. Now we can take the SD card out of the computer and put it into our Wii. After we put the SD card in, we're gonna go to this little letter thing, the Wii message board. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention was you wanna make sure that the Wii is set to the current date. Otherwise, this is gonna be, you're not gonna be able to see this next part. At first, I wasn't able to see this red letter here. I had to navigate back a day and then go forward again. And now I see this red letter, which I'm gonna click. The hack me installer is gonna start. You have to wait about 30 seconds for this one to pop up and then you're gonna press one to skip it. I'm gonna kind of breeze through this next section. If you want more details, you could visit the we.guide section about installing HackMe and the Hobart channel here. It gives you more information about each step as we go along and what it actually means. 
But for now, I'm just gonna hit continue and scroll up here to install the homebrew channel and click yes, continue. And then hit continue again. Then we're gonna go down to boot me. My particular Wii, I can't install boot me as boot two. I could only install boot me as iOS. So I'm gonna click that. I have the SD card in because I did letter bomb. So I'm just gonna hit yes, continue to format the SD card. And again, install boot me slash iOS now. All right, then we're gonna go down to return to the main menu. Oops, I think I missed a step. I forgot to click this prepare an SD card. So I'm gonna click that, go up and click yes, continue. And then we're gonna click continue. All right, now I'll click return to the menu and exit. Now we should restart in the homebrew channel. Okay, now that we're on the homebrew channel, let's go ahead and press home, the home button on the Wiimote, and then press this launch boot me now we're gonna go through and make a backup of our NAND. Now that we're in boot me, we actually can't use the Wiimote to navigate this. So we're gonna to have to use the buttons on the front of our Wii to navigate this menu. The power button selects these options and the reset button will actually enter an option. So we're gonna go over to these cogs or the settings menu all the way to the right. Then we're gonna select this first option that looks like a green arrow pointing to the SD card. Now we're gonna wait for our NAND to back up here. All right, and as soon as the verification is finished, then we can go ahead and press any button on the front of our Wii. And now we can get out of boot me and go back to our Wii. Let's hop back to the computer and in Wii.guide, we're gonna go to this preloader installation. Before we move on, we're gonna need three different things. We're gonna need the files for this preloader installer. And if we scroll down a little bit, we're gonna click the link to go to the CIOS page and download this D2X CIOS installer. And finally, we're gonna need this RV loader app, which we're gonna be using in our Ashita Wii. The RV loader app is not required if you're just doing a standard Wii soft mod. The RV loader here is a custom menu that we're gonna be using when our Wii is in handheld mode. Scroll down to the bottom of this first post and then click on this download link here. The other two zip files only had apps folders inside of them. Inside of the RV loader zip, we're gonna go into this RV loader folder and then copy all of these folders and put them into our SD card. So we should have something like this when we're done. Inside of the apps folder, we'll have a bunch of apps, including RV loader, preloader, and the CIOS installer. Go ahead and put the SD card back into our Wii and we're gonna open the homebrew channel again. First thing we're gonna do is open the preloader here. Click load. And when we get to the screen, we're gonna press plus, and this is automatically gonna install Preloader. And then we're gonna hit A to go back to the homebrew channel. Next, let's see if Preloader installed. So we'll go ahead and turn off our Wii, and then when we turn it back on again, we're gonna hold down the reset button. All right, looks like Preloader installed. We're gonna go down to System Menu Hacks, and we're gonna follow Wii.guide and turn on a bunch of these hacks, such as block disk updates, block online up updates, this is gonna prevent our Wii from updating itself and we're gonna turn on region free everything. While we're here, I wanna try out this 480p graphics fix and we're gonna to go to the bottom and press save settings. And that's pretty cool. We can go to the homebrew channel from here. So let's go to the homebrew channel. Okay, next we're gonna install custom iOS. We're gonna go up to D2XC iOS installer, click load. We've got a bunch of options in the settings menu. I'm gonna go ahead and follow what is recommended on the Wii.guide. So this first option is gonna be set to V10 beta 52. I'm gonna select CIOS base 57 and CIOS version 65,535. All right, now I can press A and then A again. This is gonna install some iOS files. All right, according to the Wii.guide site, we need to follow this process two more times. I'm just gonna link to Wii.guide. Please just follow the guide for the CIOS settings to install all these and make sure you don't make any mistakes. After we've installed those three different CIOS files, we're gonna go ahead and press B to exit this installer. There's only one thing left for us to do, and that is to install RV Loader. So let's go into the homebrew channel. Then we can go down to RV Loader. 
Ah, okay, I think I know what the issue is. Up until now, we've been using the SD card slot in the front of the Wii to do all of our soft modding. However, when we build our Ashida, we're going to be using USB instead. So what we can do is use a USB to SD card adapter. In fact, if you're planning to build the Ashida and you already have some of the stuff on the bill of materials, you might have the PMS PD or power delivery board already. And inside of there is a micro SD card to USB adapter thing. And I think now is a good time to switch to the SD card that I'm going to be using with my Ashida. And it's actually 128 gigabytes, which is bigger than the format utility in Windows allows you to format as FAT32. So we need this to be formatted as FAT32. I use this Seagate Disk Wizard utility to format my SD card. So now I have this 128 gig SD card formatted as FAT32. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all the files from my smaller SD card, move them on to this other one. All right, now I could take this SD card, which is a micro SD card and put it into that USB adapter. So I put the SD to USB adapter into the USB ports in the back of the Wii. Now we can go to the homebrew channel. Now we're gonna boot up RV loader again. Okay, cool. Now RV loader is asking to be installed. So let's go ahead and press A. Now it's asking me to choose a couple of settings. The first one is patch out Wi-Fi. I don't plan to move the Wi-Fi module from the trimmed Wii motherboard, so I'm gonna answer yes to patch out Wi-Fi. And the other one is enable VGA, and I'm gonna choose yes also, because we're gonna be using a VGA LCD screen when we do our Ashida mod. And you can drive those VGA screens with VGA output straight from the Wii. Now we can press the home button to run the install process. And then we need to hold down home to begin the install process. After that, the Wii should restart into RV loader, but because I enabled VGA and disabled component video, I'm using component cables to record this. So let me switch over to composite cables. Maybe I can display what the RV loader app looks like. All right, I'm getting this weird screen, but maybe it's because my composite cables suck. Okay, I went to the RV loader FAQ and I found out that if you boot the Wii with no video cable plugged in, it will switch from VGA mode back to component mode. So if you have component cables like I do, and you still want to test before you do your trim, you can turn the Wii off, unplug your video cable, turn the Wii back on, and then while it's running, plug the cable back in. All right, cool. It looks like RV Loader is working. I don't have any GameCube games on the SD card, but at least I can get into RV Loader. That's it for this video, but get subscribed so you don't miss my Wii OMG WTF trim video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.